I get to work with so many brilliant people. I mean, people are entrepreneurs that they're doing some really fascinating things. How important relationships are in the business environment. And one of my favorite things about small businesses is just that, that we have the ability to to build some really strong and meaningful relationships. We gotta have money out there for us to make it. Right, absolutely. Gotta lend some to make some, right? All right. Welcome back to Small Business Never Sleeps. My name is John Slusser and this is Nathan Maud. We're the co-founders of the Indiana Small Business Association and your host of Small Business Never Sleeps. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. Today is episode number four and we couldn't be more excited. Um, small Business Never Sleeps is geared towards specifically that small business owner, as well as those who represent small business. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about commercial banking and how commercial banking can help a small business thrive. Joining us today is Jake Sappenfield, Senior Vice President and Commercial Banking Team Leader of First Financial Bank. How are you guys doing? <laughs> doing, doing well. Good. good. Excited to be here. Hey, we're yeah. glad to have you on. <laughs> Jake, thanks for joining us today. We absolutely appreciate it. We're excited. So let's just... <clears throat> dive right into things. Yeah, absolutely. So for those listeners, um, I've had the pleasure of working with Jake over the past few years and only have experienced great things with himself as well as his team at First Financial. Um, so to kick things off, Jake, you mind just letting the audience know who you are? Yeah. So i um, um, been in banking now for almost 20 years. Hate to admit that sometimes to <laughs> you two young guys. Um, father of three kids. I got um, maybe a unique setup. You know, a couple of teenage daughters and a two-year-old at home. So, oh, wow. Been working from home since mid-March of last year. So um, that's been exciting uh, to be, I guess, home that much. Um, been in commercial lending most of my uh, career um, outside maybe like the first eight months, which we'll, we'll discuss that maybe <laughs> a little bit later. But, um, you know, um, excited to be here. Like I said, excited to share kind of my role in helping small business owners. Awesome. Where'd you, uh, where'd you go to college at, Jake? I'm a proud Franklin College grad. Uh, I did um, uh, do my MBA work at uh, Butler, um, and I played, I played at Franklin, a big IU fan. So to sum all this up, uh, it's been a pretty boring March <laughs> <laughs> since I can't root on any of my favorite teams. Yeah, I understand. So to clarify, you played basketball for Franklin? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, gotcha. And uh, all four years, was it? All four years, I tell people, um, Bob Knight didn't recruit me, so I had no choice <laughs> uh, to go smaller. understand. Do you still play now? Um, I, I did, but uh, um, I'd say ankles and mm. age have caught up to me. And having three girls at home and coaching them, I haven't shot with a men's ball in about five years. <laughs> all right, so we'll start calling you Coach Jake from now on. That's right. <laughs> gotcha. Well, hey, it's it's great to have you on. and. Uh, excited to learn more about you and and First Financial Bank and your guys' commercial banking capabilities and just how these resources position are positioned to help small businesses thrive. But before we get a little bit deeper, you know, a quick question to to start some things off for you is you, you mentioned you've been in banking for 20 years. Uh, you pr pretty much started right out of college, except for those eight months that you just talked about. So so why banking and, and what's kept you there? Well, I graduated with a finance degree, so I always have fascination with money and businesses and, and, and different things like that. I thought I was going to be a stockbroker. You know, I thought, okay. you know, I'm going to go work, you know, um, in Manhattan and, and do that, go that route. Um, so 9-11 happened my senior year of college. Mm. Okay. That changed a lot of things. Um, still went to stockbroker route. Still, still um, went to Raymond James, and things changed. We, we invaded Iraq, and mm -hmm. the market... Mm -hmm kind of crashed at that point. This was 02 and that became a tough business. And, and so a, a bank president, local bank president, down in Franklin reached out to me, um, you know, described, I guess, what was, you know, um, an idea he had. And, and I said, let's do it. So got it right into commercial banking, a very small uh, institution. Awesome. Which, which bank was that to Me start things out? It was mutual savings bank headquartered down in Franklin. So you know, the bank, this is how small town this is, right? <laughs> the bank president um, played basketball at Franklin College. Mm -hmm. Second guy in charge played basketball at Franklin College. Oh. So they reached out to a recent Franklin College grad and give him a shot. So Yeah, I understand. So after the, the first stop, then you ended up at Main Source, right? Right. Okay. And then Main Source was then acquired by First Financial? They call it a merger, but oh, pretty merger? similar, yeah. Okay, gotcha. So then ever since then, you've just, you, you stuck yeah. it out at First Financial Bank, so... Why First Financial Bank? Well, uh, you know, first of all, I would say that the, 
the way that the bank itself treats people um, is top notch. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, lots of flexibility, um, you know, benefits, and and you see that, and because you treat your employees that well, naturally that progresses into you want to take care of cu customers that well. Um, the other thing is, and again, no, no knock on any other financial institutions. I don't know their their environment, but we're we're positioned to be a nice size of a bank, but still a community feel. And that's that's really, you know, my forte is community lending, community banking, working with small business owners. So they give us that ability to have kind of that technology, all those assets that you would get with a big bank, um, but we can deliver them to our, our local uh, business owners. That's awesome. Well, thanks for sharing, Jake, about First Financial and kind of how you ended up there. And just like banking, or I'm sure banking, just like the industries John and I are in, it's always evolving. Things are always changing. There's new offerings, new technology, new challenges, and we have to all be an expert within our industries to help service these small business owners. So what are some things that you continue to do to learn in your space and how have you adapt over the new challenges, especially within the last year? There's been challenges in the last year. <laughs> what challenges? <laughs> I know, right? Um, you know, you know, what's interesting is, um, the, the core, and yeah, I'm in lending, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, on the, on the deposit side and a lot of the other parts of the bank, there is always changing mm -hmm. the way, you know, people deposit their funds, the way they transact with, um, you know, customers transact with each other, the way businesses transact with businesses that's evolving, becoming more efficient, mm -hmm. you know, fraud's a big issue that always comes up in that side. So we're always trying to fight those things. On the lending side, um, there's some core principles that really don't change. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, and, you know, we always look at that as kind of a background of how we, how we move forward. But what does change a lot are the issues, the opportunities, the circumstances that small mm -hmm. business owners go through. And, you know, part of why I love what I do is, you know, I get to develop relationships with people and live out those opportunities, those issues, and try to help them solve them. So, you know, part of my education is not really knowing more about the banking side and the lending side, but really keeping up on the economy, keeping mm -hmm. up on, you know, really putting my ear to the ground what small business owners are facing, which, you know, we jo I joked, you know, what challenges, but you know, they're ever changing, you know, it, it was, how are you dealing with a shutdown now? You know, it's, you know, how are you dealing with opening back up and, and all the things that go with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true, Jake. And we thank you for the insight that you just shared, but you know, so often businesses, we become transactional, right? We're price driven and we forget how important relationships mm -hmm. are in the business environment. And one of my favorite things about small businesses is just that, that we have the ability to to build some really strong and meaningful relationships. And, and through those relationships, we can get into some you know, resources, get into some, some stories, some background, hear more about the journey that they've went through, the, the highs and the lows, and, and we get to really dive into uh, the success and, and at times dive into some of the challenges that they face as well. And, and the best part is through these relationships, we can walk them through mm -hmm. um, you know, to get to the other side. And, and, and I know in conversations between Jake and I, you've mentioned in the past, just the key to success is through meaningful relationships in which Nathan and I completely agree. Just elaborate, elaborate on the meaning, how meaningful relationships are within the banking environment. Well, I, I think that, you know, part of, part of what I do is we want, you know, we, we need always trying to do more business and get more core customers and whatnot. And, you know, what I've learned over, you know, several years is the most efficient way to do that is, one, build good relationships, build mm -hmm. good relationships with people you got, um, know, get to know them, know them personally, you know, business is personal. I don't Absolutely. care what anybody says. Um, so you develop these relationships because you want to develop those relationships and it goes both ways. Um, and naturally you're going to refer people to ones that you, uh, the people that you like, you know, the people that have helped you. And so it's very important for, for a bank to understand that and grow in that, in that way. Uh, but, you know, the other side of relationships is what does, the, what does the customer get from the bank? You know, it's not always, you know, banks will always say that it's not about rate and fees mm -hmm. and all that. Well, I mean, that's naturally they want to say that because yeah. they want to they get not the highest, but, you know, something that, that makes sense. Um, I've always thought, and this is what we try to focus on, that, 
you know, we're kind of a community center for them. I mean, and we're, we're, we can be a nice referral base for them as well, where I get to work with so many brilliant people. I mean, people are entrepreneurs that they're doing some really fascinating things. Uh, why can't I connect people when mm-hmm. it makes sense? Right. You know, and that's one of the things I know that Isba is trying to do and is doing very well is, you know, you, you look at all the different professions out there mm-hmm. and you get some of the commonalities that, that make sense, get them involved, start connecting people, mm-hmm. you know, cause you know, most of my small business owners became small business owners cause they are good at making that right. or they're good at doing that. And they're not necessarily good at, you know, being a tax preparation mm-hmm. or, you know, even operating their own business and who's going to have that conversation with them. And I think it's naturally a banker because mm-hmm. we get to see all the people who do different things very well. Right. I, I agree with that, Jake. And I've always said that, you know, the typical small business owner is an owner operator, right? They were, you know, operating an excavator. They really loved what they did. Mm-hmm. They woke up every day with a smile and they thought, Hey, maybe it's my turn to do this. Right. And mm-hmm. through a, a relationship to help them get from uh, point A to point B, they were able to make that happen. And it starts out with, with some guys like you that really focus on that relationship and really trying to help them out. Yeah. And I think that's why we all joined ISBA and are part of ISBA today is because we enjoy helping that small business owner reach their goals um, and potential, taking that work off their plate. So again, like you said, they can be an excavator operator, um, a carpet cleaner, whatever their passion is, has, has led them to. And I think it's a really cool piece that we're able to help them, you know, achieve their goals and so yeah, on. So agreed. I agree. And to piggyback you guys' comment, the one thing that I think is always a challenge with small business owners is to go from that. I'm in my business to mm-hmm. on my business. Yes, yeah, so mm-hmm. true. And usually what that entails is, you know, all of a sudden now you got to be the guy outside looking in, you got to hire people, you've got to you know, maybe do more of the paperwork stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear all the time, you're just not in the field as much. You worry about the quality of the job now because you're not actually the ones out there. So, you know, it's all those things that transition that, um, you know, I've seen over and over and really enjoy being part of the solution. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. Mm -hmm. Um, So you joined ISBA. We all joined ISBA for our passion for that small business and small business owner. What is it exactly about small business that you love so much and why small business? It's, you know, for me, from a selfish reason is, um, you know, it's funny because my kids think banking's so boring. You uh-huh. just go in and people give you money, then you learn it out and you go home, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly how it is. Um, it's so dynamic and every situation so different. And, you know, I'm in a position now where I run a team mm-hmm. and I, yeah, I train a lot of young lenders and I tell them it's going to take you several years because you never see the same situation twice. Mm-hmm. And you might see similar and that will help you out, but you rarely right. see the same situation twice. So it's, it's exciting because it's problem solving Absolutely, a lot of times. And, you know, we don't always have all the solutions all mm-hmm. the time, uh, which goes back to connecting people. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just the, the, the difference. And you, know, you may have seven or eight things going on at one time and they're all different. And to be able to solve those and be part of the solution going forward. And just the, I don't know, the success, when you see a small business owner succeed, whatever that means to them, mm-hmm. it may mean a revenue mark. It may mean selling their business. It may mean just being profitable. Absolutely. But whatever that happens, uh, man, that, that is as cool as a feeling as it gets. Mm-hmm. I absolutely agree. And I couldn't say it better. I feel like, you know, so far in this conversation, we've learned a lot about you. We've learned a lot about First Financial Bank and and just why small business is so important to you. And I get the sense that you're just a true expert and you're focused on on learning and growing. And I absolutely love it. Now that we've we've had that conversation, how about we dive a little bit deeper into the banking side of the conversation? So to kick things off from that end, what does access to capital look like in 2021? Well, I you know, I get that question and um a lot. And I always remind people, understand. Banks have to lend money Mm -hmm. to make money. So, you know, we want to lend money. Um, Now, are there going to be a little more challenges? Yes. And when I say challenges, there's going to be some more questions, some more back and forth um, because of the times we're in, you know, and I switched banks back in 08 
or in actually 2010, but because of the 08 crisis, mm -hmm. same thing then, you know, it was, you know, banks are conservative by nature. So I would expect just a little, little bit of a longer process um, going into it. But, you know, understand, ultimately, we got to have money out there for us to make it. Right. Absolutely. Got to lend some to make some, right? Right. right. Awesome. So, Jake, if I was a small business owner, um, especially for the listeners tuning in today, what are some of the things they can do to put themselves in a position to borrow money? No, great question. And really, <clears throat> first, th you know, first and foremost, really is you have to look at COVID-19, how that has mm -hmm. affected you and how that's going to look going forward. Mm -hmm. So that's really one of the most, you know, that's the first question is out of our mouth is, you know, starting in March of last year, what happened? You mm -hmm. know, what happened to your revenues? What happened to your expenses? How did you adapt to that? Um, and it's all over the board, those answers, right? Um, and then how have you adapted going forward? What's this year going to look like? Because we're not out of the woods, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still a lot of things going on. So yep. that's step number one. Um, the second one is no secret, but it's worth saying cash is king. Mm -hmm. All right. And, you know, we we take a very hard look at not only the company balance sheet, but personal financial statements as well. And, you know, build cash. Mm -hmm. You know, all I can say is build cash. Um, because one of the, the best mitigate to risk, um, you know, and I say that is, hey, I want to buy this truck for my business. And a bank says, I don't know about that. And you say, I want, I can put 25% down. Mm -hmm. That that helps that situation yeah, out quite absolutely. a bit. So, you know, cash is another one. Um, you know, we're, take, we're telling people, you know, this is the time to take inventory on really your your income statement. And a lot of times people focus on revenue mm -hmm. as, you know, I want to grow my business to a million or two million. You guys have <laughs> yeah, heard that. Right. Absolutely. Um, but now is a great time to really take a hard look at expenses. Okay. You know, what, what are some of the, exp you know, fixed and variable costs that you can, you can cut. And people are doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see, you know, maybe I don't need as many people at the office, you know, so work from home and that saves, saves some costs. And, you know, I, I, I met with a church yesterday and, they're bragging about saving utility costs, you know, and different things. And so they, they're getting creative on that. Okay. So that's, that's a big deal. And the last time really is loaning money to core clients. You know, mm -hmm. we, we want to work with core clients. So, you know, my message to small business owners is be prepared to move your account because that's really what banks are looking for. And there's a re there's a reason behind that. Not only is when you have your account with that bank, um, that that is a signal that you truly bank there. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, banks are looking for different ways to make money. So, you know, when your core accounts there, you know, you're probably, you might be needing treasury management, you might be needing ACH, there's, you know, then your personal accounts and all those things that go with that is an opportunity for a bank to make more money as well. Okay. Yeah, that's great, Jake. And from what I gather, access to capital is there and you've given some great best practices to position a small business to borrow money. But what if COVID or a bad 2020 performance is hindering a small business from borrowing money? What are some things that they can do? Well, you know, and really this, this is, this hits home for me because this is where it separates a good banker and a bad banker. All right. You know, at really, at, at, we are educators more than anything. Um, when you are a small business lender, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm prepared to talk to business owners that this is not their forte, right? Yep. Most Small business owners don't borrow money on a regular basis, so they don't know what we're looking for. Okay, so um, so a lot of times they come to us where they're not in the best position to borrow money. Doesn't mean we don't want to do business with them, but they're just not in that best position. You know, so for me, it's never really acceptable to say no, you know, no and walk away. Mm -hmm. And I've got countless examples of these over my years of being in this where. You sit down with a client and say, you know, you may not be able to do something right this moment. If if your timing of this needs to be, let's let's I'll help you figure out some solutions here. But if timing isn't, and this is where you want to go, let me help you put you in position to borrow money. And that may be, you know, this is how we analyze this. You know, and for the most part, it's a working plan mm -hmm. over a period of time to get them to a spot where they can buy that building or they can buy that business or they can increase their line of credit. So, again, we're educators at heart. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's building that relationship. And eventually, if you land that and they listen to you, mm -hmm. man, that, that's just a 
first of all, you've you've created a bond there that they're mm-hmm. they're just you know they're going to trust you um, for a long time. But I think that too much, too often, I should say, banks put pressure on their lenders to get immediate results, and they don't take the time to sit down with people and and understand that a lot of their future business are people that just aren't in position today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Agreed. awesome. Agreed. So for our audience tuning in, that small business owner, as well as those who represent the small business, if someone listening today wanted to learn more and was interested about lending best practices, um, where would they be able to find find you and connect with you? Well, I'm on LinkedIn, so I've been okay. very active there, um, obviously through ISBA. Um, so I'm always active um, with them and, um, you know, we can always attach my email and phone number and stuff like that. But usually LinkedIn is the best way for me since I'm, I've been pretty active on that in the last couple of years. Jake, there's so many other uh, groups that you could be a part of and, and you selected ISBA. So why ISBA? What's your perspective of ISBA? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, I, I think we're talking about our passions with um, helping small business owners. Uh, this is one of the first groups where you brought in all these different uh, professions that work with small business owners. And not only are we sharing our passion and we're sharing referrals and sharing, you know, different things, but we're also educating each other. Mm-hmm. Um, for, for me, there's not a common place that I go to kind of keep my ear to the ground on what's going on in the economy and different fa- faucets, you know? And so for, for me, ISBA, whenever, you know, we get together or there's these type of sessions um, it's an educational moment that helps me understand kind of what's going on in all sectors. And like I said, I want to be a solution. And I recognize not everything is a banking solution. Mm-hmm. There are other issues going on out there. And I want to be able to be a little knowledgeable and help my clients. That's great insight, Jake. Thank you for joining us today on our Small Business Never Sleeps podcast. I enjoyed getting to know you better and gathering a clear understanding of commercial lending and how it can help a small business thrive. Absolutely. We appreciate all the great detail you provided today and how we can better position you as a resource for that small business owner here in the great state of Indiana. So thank you very much again for joining us. And do you have any last words? Yeah, first, I appreciate the time, guys. And and really, you know, my main message would be that if you're a small business owner, uh, you deserve to have a relationship with a bank. You deserve to have some, you know, that with a financial institution that um, understands your business that's willing to sit down with you and work with you um, and come up with a plan, especially right now. If you don't have that, there are bankers out there. You know, I would definitely say I'm one of them, but I'm not the only one. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, keep searching for that because you should have someone that you can go to, you can bounce ideas off of. That's what we do um, at First Financial Bank on my team. Um, but every every business owner deserves that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jake, for tuning in today and joining us on the Small Business Never Sleeps podcast. You can find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, as well as all your other podcast platforms like Spotify, iTunes, Google, and Stitcher. Next time, Nathan and I will spend some time walking through the journey of a small business owner's path towards success. And don't forget to keep on grinding because small business never sleeps.